Hello, hello, and if you are watching this on the day that it came out, happy October. We are finally here. It is still 80 degrees outside for me right now, but that's okay. It's still October, which means the cooler weather is coming. Um, so today I figured it'd be kind of fun. I was just going through my pantry and I found all my lovely cookbooks, which I have, I don't know, probably about three or four Disney cookbooks. Two are Disney Park cookbooks, and then one is this lovely Disney Villains cookbook, which I figured since it's October, it means it is officially spooky season, which means that we can start planning for halloween -y. So I was looking through this this morning and I saw these lovely Ursula for un poor unfortunate rolls, which is cinnamon rolls with these lovely purple icing. And I was like, what a better way than to kick off October with some lovely spooky style cinnamon rolls for breakfast in the morning. So actually, as I'm filming, filming this, it is actually September 30th. So tomorrow morning will be October 1st. So I figured to kick that off for not only us, but for my family, I would make some yummy spooky looking cinnamon rolls for breakfast in the morning. Now I just looked at my nails and I do in fact have purple already on my fingernail. And that is because instead of following everything with this recipe, I decided to, instead of going with actual cinnamon rolls, I am making a blueberry roll. So it's gonna be an actual cinnamon roll, but instead of having a cinnamon spread on the inside, I'm going to be doing blueberries, which I already started trying to cook down. Fingers crossed that it works out. I don't know. I can. I always have to derail my recipes one way or, or another. So I decided to use some frozen blueberries and cook them down with some sugar to kind of hopefully make like a jam style situation to put in the center of my cinnamon rolls. So I did already do that. I don't really like portion things out like I probably should have. I would say it's probably a little over a cup of frozen blueberries to like one fourth cup sugar. And I just cooked that down. I did put a splash of vanilla in there though. So there you go. But I haven't started on the actual dough itself yet. So I wanted to start the video before I got too far ahead of myself. And here, let me show you. Hopefully I can actually show you without burning the heck out of myself. These are what my blueberries look like. They did cook down because they thicken um, and it did in fact thicken. So there we go. Hopefully it works out. Let's go ahead and start on this uh, dough. So whenever you are preparing a baked good, you always want to start with the dry ingredients separate from the wet ingredients. So here I'm just measuring out three cups of flour. Um, now it did call for either three to three and a half cups of flour, but I started with three because I didn't want them to be too dry. Um, and so I'm just putting the three cups in and then it calls for you to add a half cup of white granulated sugar and then a teaspoon of salt and then one pack of active Actually, it's instant yeast. So I'm just adding that all into this bowl here, and then I'm going to give it a quick mix. Um, spoiler alert, I did end up adding in the half cup of flour later on because the dough was very, very wet and sticky, um, but you'll see that in a little bit. But I just wanted to mention that real quick. So now I'm just stirring up this bowl of dry ingredients before we get going on the wet. So for the wet ingredients, it calls for a fourth cup of butter and a fourth cup of water and then two thirds cup of whole milk. So we heat it until the mixture is warm. It's all just melted together. I touched it with my finger just to make sure that it wasn't too hot because we don't want to kill the yeast. So now it wants me to go ahead and just mix one into the other. So I'm just gonna gently pour this in. Okay, I'm just making sure, pour the liquid into the dry ingredients and then add the egg. Still, so, okay, large egg going in. Cross the shell, although I need to rinse my hand now. Okay, now. 
So this is where I start to realize that, I don't know, I wish I had actually, instead of using the recipe for the dough in the book, I just went off of what I typically do for my cinnamon rolls because I, I, it was just failed from the start because I don't know if it's the way that they incorporated the, the yeast or if it's the way that I, now you will see that I'm adding in the other half cup of flour. I'm not sure which one it is. It might be the combination of the two, but it didn't come to be a soft, fluffy cinnamon roll half dough. Cup of extra flour. Um, the see here's I'm, I'm adding in the half cup of flour now. Flour. It didn't end up being soft and fluffy. It actually came out to be more so bready than more. I would have preferred it to be. Um, but you live oh, and you learn. I next this. time will definitely be using the cinnamon roll recipe that I typically use because I just like that dough a lot better. I feel like it's just a lot different. I ended up with this one, I added the yeast in with the dry ingredients, whereas in the one that I do, I let the yeast like bloom and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know if it's that. I don't really know exactly what the situation is, but basically the, the recipe from this point now says to knead the dough for five minutes. Um, so here I'm just kneading it in. It was still super tacky, which is why I ended up adding in the other half cup of flour. It was just so like tacky and sticky. I couldn't really knead it. It was just sticking to me like glue, which you can see on the countertop here because I'm like fidgeting with how dry it is. It was just extremely, or not dry, how wet it was. It was just really sticky. So I'm kneading it now. Um, and then I am going to go ahead and let it rest once you've kneaded it for about five minutes, it says to let it rest and um, cover it for about 10 minutes um, so that it can, you know, it says double in size. It definitely doesn't double in size, but I don't know. So I covered it. Now it's about 10 minutes later and I'm uncovering it and I'm checking to see if it bounces back and it doesn't. <laughs> so um i just carry on i am it says in the the book that it wants it to be 10 by 16 rectangle i never get it to that i just do my best so um, i'm just rolling it out until it's as good as it's gonna get basically and then we will apply the filling which like i said is the blueberry mixture. Now, looking back, I would have rather added the blueberry mixture into my actual dough and then use a regular spread because it just, it would have been better. I just, the whole thing ended up being a little more flawed, but we all ate it. It is now October 1st while I'm recording this voiceover and we all ate it. It was fine, but looking back, I would have done it differently. So here I am, I'm just adding the spread here. I did add a little bit of butter to the spread um, just to ensure that it, I don't know, soaked in and did what it was supposed to do and kind of thinned out the mixture because it was like a heavy syrup by the time that I was ready to actually put it into the cinnamon roll. So I added a little bit of butter. I think it did it just fine. So I'm just spreading it here. I'm like weirdly OCD about spreading things onto things. Like my husband always makes fun of me when we go to Subway or something like that. It always aggravates me whenever the people just like squirt the mayonnaise or whatever, you know, topping you put on your sandwich just like squirts it on the center and then it's just all in the center. Like I spread that crap to the edge of everything, <laughs> which you will be able to tell in this little segment here because I am meticulously spreading it to the edges. So I do feel like the flavors were there, like it was definitely good flavor, but um, the dough just messed it up for me. Like I said, I don't know if, I don't know if it was because I added the half cup of flour later on in the recipe or I don't know. I have no idea, but it ended up being okay. Like I said, we ate it, but I would do it differently next time for sure. Okay. So this is where things start to get a little hairy. Because now that I've rolled out all of my dough, it is sticking to the countertop. So I'm trying to now roll it into the actual cinnamon roll roll shape. And it's trying to stick to the countertop. So I'm just weaving back and forth trying to 
slowly pry it off the counter and also roll the dough at the same time because at this point I don't know if you can tell it's almost just kind of like it's not rolling it's just being like pushed together so I'm going back and now trying to like solidify the actual roll um, during this sequence I did end up stopping and looking for my floss to kind of help get it out from underneath the counter you know like if I was to wedge it underneath it before I used it to actually cut the rolls but I couldn't find it because I have a toddler in my house who constantly goes through all of my drawers and takes things and you know whatever so I couldn't find it but I was able to finish getting it all rolled up but it obviously is a hot mess at this point so again as I had mentioned I can't find my floss to cut my rolls so now I'm having to use a knife and I've never done that before, and I was kind of upset about it, but it ended up working out fine. It would have looked a lot better had I had the floss, but, um, you know, you make do with what you got, and that's what we're doing here. So I'm cutting them, and, you know, they're doing all right, but I couldn't tell if they actually looked like a roll or not before I was cutting them because the edges were not perfectly, like, spread out like the rest of it was. So... During, once I got to the middle, I was able to see that it actually was in a more roll look looking shape than I, I don't know. I wasn't sure what I was going to get with these, to be honest with you. Because on top of the fact that I added blueberries, it made it really like squishy. So, you know, if there was sugar and cinnamon in the middle, it probably would have been more gritty and would have held on to the dough better. But the blueberries just wanted to slide around, which made it even harder to keep it in its shape. On top of the fact now I'm like squishing the shape down with a knife. So I don't know. These things were kind of flawed to begin with. <laughs> um, but, you know, I've never learned my lesson on not messing with a um, recipe. So it all worked out just fine. We ate it. <laughs> I'm just going to keep on saying that. We ate it. Um, but maybe I'll post my actual cinnamon roll recipe so you can not, you know, think of me as a failure in the cinnamon roll biz because these just weren't my brightest moment and that's okay. So I got them all spaced out and I'm just trying to fix them so that they can have some room to develop. Something I didn't actually mention is I started the oven and let them rest for about 60 to 90 minutes so that they could hopefully double in size. Poor Unfortunate Souls could not be a better name for these cinnamon rolls, specifically mine because, because look at them. <laughs> but I will say I tried the filling that I made and they were, they are definitely going to taste good. So I have the oven heating up to 375 while that is happening. I'm going to cover these again and let them rest and like maybe rise a little more. And then we'll put them in, we'll make some icing and top them and we'll taste, test them because yum. Fresh out of the oven. So I forgot to show you how to make the icing. It was really simple. It's just food coloring, confectioner sugar, and some milk and vanilla extract. So you just mix them all up. You can add some cream cheese in there if you want. I would look up a recipe for that because I didn't do that, but I wanted to. And now I'm just kind of drizzling it upon them. I didn't want to just douse them in this, because this like, icing because I'm not a super fan of that kind of icing um, and I didn't have enough cream cheese to make the one that I wanted to make so I'm just kind of drizzling it I think it made them look even more spooky since there's blueberries in the mixture it's very Ursula-esque which is the whole point so and the finished product I think they turned out great spooky for October 1st. So happy October 1st. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up down below and um, leave me a comment. If you would like to see more videos like this, I would love to post them with you. See you guys next time. Bye.